This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I picked up this mid-century style dresser from Facebook Marketplace. There was also a matching tall boy. Both were painted in this light gray color. The paint was obviously peeling off in some spots. I honestly have no idea why they painted this in the first place. It could be a disaster underneath. I have no idea. I'm taking a chance on these and hoping they only painted to give it an update. Knowing the maker, Vickert, which is a Canadian company, there's walnut hiding underneath this, so my fingers and toes are crossed that it is still in good condition underneath. There's a few little repairs to make, like this drawer that is missing its plastic guide. That's a super easy fix. The biggest amount of time with this piece is definitely going to be removing that paint, so stay tuned. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Getting right into this project, I'm going to remove all of the drawers, make sure there's no damage inside or to the drawers or their guides. For some reason, this drawer was sticking. I still have no idea why. I couldn't see anything that it was hooked on. It is a mystery. I took the bottom drawer out first. No idea. I checked the rails. These bits are loose on both sides, so they will have to be glued in. And just as I was reaching in to show you guys that, I found the missing drawer slide, so that's good. I just need a few extra screws. These are the crossbars that are inside. Both of them have pulled away, so I'm just going to add some glue and pop those back into place later on. Because this paint is very poorly adhered, I'm actually scraping it off. There's a couple of ways I could take this paint off. I could use a chemical stripper, which you guys know I use all the time. My experience though with this type of paint is that it just makes a bit of a gummy mess, so it's going to be uh, faster, cleaner, and obviously less smelly to just scrape this off. It's a bit of a two-part process. First I scrape the paint off and then I can scrape the actual finish off. Be really careful if you're scraping the edge of something. Sometimes that piece of veneer that runs sideways is up slightly higher than the top and you can tear it off. So just be really careful. You pretty much always want to scrape with the grain. Scraping across the grain will chew it up <laughs> pretty good. The edge banding on these veneered pieces are always running in this direction on the sides. So even though there was paint on it, I knew exactly which way to scrape. And here I'm just scraping through the original finish down to the bare wood just to show you the difference in the color. It takes a little more elbow grease to get down through that thick, thick, old, probably lacquer or shellac finish. So far, this is the only thing that I can see that may have prompted them to paint it in the first place. It looks like it might have been an area where it got scraped or there was water damage. And if I scrape down to the wood here, I'm pretty sure that we're going to see a slight color change here. So not always the best reason to paint something, but maybe they just wanted to paint it and that's fine. My point is just that I'm not really seeing a lot of damage here, so that's really good news for me. Mr. Dewalt is hitting this with 150 grit sandpaper and after that I will follow it with 220 which will be my final sanding on this. 
I talk quite a bit about repeating patterns on veneer when you're trying to determine if something is solid wood or veneer. It's quite clear here on the end. Now this is obviously looking a lot better, but one of the biggest problems with walnut is the open grain, and it's notorious for especially light colored like white paint to get trapped in those pores. It is literally impossible for me to get all of these out, but I'm going to get as many out as I can see, and the ones that I can't pick out, I'm going to camouflage, and you'll see that a little bit later. And on to scraping all of the framing bits. So the base of this piece is not walnut, same with the framing on the inside, it's all solid ash. So I'm thinking I might go for a bit of a two-tone look with this piece. I'm going to leave the walnut as is and the ash as is. But first I need to flip this upside down and take these legs off. I apologize, some of these clips here might be a little bit bright. I had the door open and I didn't realize my camera wasn't adjusting for that. There's a little piece of trim across the front that I wanted to take off because paint had gotten down in between that and the rest of the piece. So there were two screws at each end and then I just carefully pried this off evenly so as not to disturb the staples because I'm going to be popping them right back onto the same spot. And you can see the paint here that I really wanted to get off. Once I cleaned that up, I dabbed a little bit of glue on, popped everything back in, re-screwed it, and then clamped it and left it for a couple of hours. And while this piece is still upside down, I'm just scraping the underside of all of these <laughs> braces. I'm using my surf prep to get into some of these tighter corners. This is specifically why I wanted this sander. There are just some places, as much as I love Mr. Dewalt, that he just can't fit. That's one of them. Now some of you may be wondering why I didn't just sand the paint away, because that is certainly an option. And I'm going to show you here on the legs that while you can do this, it does take a little bit longer. Obviously not when it's sped up eight times the normal speed. But on the solid wood legs, that's totally fine. On the top, which is veneer, I definitely don't recommend it because by the time you sand through all that stuff, it's pretty easy to blow through the veneer and you definitely don't want to do that. I usually reserve sanding finishes off, unless they're super thin, to solid wood pieces like legs and trim. So just for contrast, I'm going to scrape this leg assembly and then sand it. And I know it seems like it takes longer because there's two steps, but it's actually a bit faster to do it this way than to try to sand through that paint, which can gum up your sandpaper. I definitely just prefer it this way. This little teardrop shaped scraper is perfect for getting in this concave area and I used the point of it a lot on this piece trying to get little bits of paint out of everywhere. It was terrible.
To reattach both of these cross braces, I'm just adding a little bit of wood glue and I'm guiding this right back onto the original staples using my dead blow mallet to just push it into place. And I saved the best for last. These drawers took forever. Every single drawer was over an hour. I had to first pry these pieces off. Initially, the first drawer I did, I tried to scrape around them. It just, it wasn't working. They had to come off. It's really difficult to do this because you have to try to pry it off evenly so that you don't break it. And you also don't want to tear the veneer that's underneath. So it's definitely not easy to do. And look at this paint. Your paint is not supposed to do this. <laughs> Speaking of which, when I picked these up, they wanted to give me the paint um, that they initially painted it in. And I know Bear is actually a pretty good brand of paint. The problem is prep. They obviously didn't prep this properly. It doesn't matter what kind of paint you use, you have to clean, scuff sand, or find some way to scuff up the surface. You don't need to sand right down to bare wood, definitely don't do that. But there has to be something for that paint to grip to or this is what happens, it just peels off. By this point, I was already at the very beginning of day three of this piece. The nine drawers plus all these little decorative bits on the drawers, those took just as long to do as the entire rest of the piece. I'm not exaggerating, this took a long time. And again, if you're wondering why I didn't use stripper, the last time I used stripper on this type of paint, it was an absolute disaster. It turned into this creamy, slimy, gross mess, and I just, there's no way. Even though this took quite a while to do, for me, I feel it was the best way to do it. And here we are, totally bare. This is where I need to make some decisions. You can see that there's some pretty crazy wood grain on this side, and if you look at the other side, it's that nice dark color. <laughs> the top drawers are going to be a different tone than the bottom drawers. I already know it. I can just tell by looking at it. And the area surrounding these handles is ash and not walnut. So there'll be a two tone there as well, unless I alter it. To make things worse, they lined the inside of this part with ash veneer and the inside of this part with walnut veneer. So we've got a bit of a mishmash here. I really don't want to have to stain the whole thing, so what I'm doing, I'm using General Finishes Gel Stain in the Colored Nutmeg, which is going to give me the warm tone that I'm looking for, and I'm going to do the inside of the side panels and all of the bracing and the trim in the front here. The top sides and drawers will all just have Odie's oil on it, and that's just going to bring out the beautiful natural color of the walnut, and there will be variation. That's one thing I had to consider here. If I were to stain it, it would all be roughly the same sort of values and tones, but sometimes I like wood to just do its thing without being altered, and that's definitely what I'm going for in this piece. It's not gonna to appeal to everyone. Some people love that uniform, one color look, including the manufacturer. Like, they actually toned this piece to all be the same tone, and I'm kind of undoing that. <laughs> I just wanted to take a moment to say a huge thank you to everybody who has sent me teas in the last few months. I got a little bit behind on my thank yous on my videos, so my apologies for that. It's never taken for granted and I just want to say a huge thank you. I truly, truly appreciate your support.
I'll actually be using four different colors of these Mohawk brush tip markers just to touch up any little areas where the veneer was a little bit thin or where there are little white specks of paint still. Like I said before, it's going to be impossible to get every little white fleck out of the grain of this wood, but I definitely did my best to try to get as much out as possible. I know there's a technique that you can use where you actually use a colored grain filler, which is great if you're going to stain the piece, but where I didn't want to stain the piece, it wasn't really an option for me. So <laughs> I'm taking the long road here and just trying to touch up as many of these little flecks as I can. To me, it's kind of the history of the piece, and while I don't want a ton of this showing, if there's the odd fleck, it just it actually shows that this was painted before and has been redone, so. Some of these were just too fine to pick out with the tool that I had so uh, you know sometimes you have to just work with what you have to work with. So many of you have seen little snippets of my backyard in some of my videos and I've even used our backyard to stage furniture every now and then. We've got a fish pond, tons of flowers and shrubs, lots of wildlife. But here's the thing about this yard. We bought the house after all of this was established. So every spring, this is what we're looking at. <laughs> Neither of us are avid gardeners, but we want to be. So I'm trying to devour as much information as I possibly can about gardening and soil types and weeding, when to trim, all of that stuff so that we can keep this yard looking beautiful, not just for us, but also for all the little critters that like to hang out with us. We have two blue jays nesting in our backyard and they get, up, they get upset sometimes if other birds are around. Including Fat Bob. <laughs> if you look up in this tree, you'll see a fluffy little bundle. That's Fat Bob. He's our resident raccoon. Skillshare has been a really great resource for me so far in my learning journey about what we have in the backyard. You can choose from beginner, intermediate, or advanced classes, and you can pick your time frame. So if I only have, you know, say 15 minutes, I can watch videos that specifically cater to my needs at the time. This class by Mark Shorter is called Simple Hacks to Make Gardening Easier, and it just offers some really quick but great tips on making life a little bit easier, such as planting seasonal plants in pots outdoors, and then it makes it a lot easier to bring them inside. And for us living here in Canada, in cold climates, that's really important. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box or my code Transcend Furniture Gallery will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. I've been loving it so far. You get a month free, check it out. As I mentioned before, I'm leaving the ash just as it is. I decided not to stain it. I'm just sealing it with the Odie's oil. And what's kind of nice about this too is you actually get to see the difference between the ash and the walnut in the joinery here. And it's just a cool little feature and it's kind of sad in a way that the manufacturer had uh, obscured that with toners and stains. These are the products that I used for this <laughs> transformation. I used general finishes gel stain in the color nutmeg. I use these Mohawk brush tip markers. One thing that unfortunately my camera, and by my camera I mean me, <laughs> forgot to record was using these Mohawk toners and I used those on the areas that I had stained with nutmeg. Ash, as you know, doesn't always stain that well so I just used these two just to get the color a little bit closer to what the rest of the piece would be. Then of course the whole thing was sealed in the Odie's Universal Oil. Oh man, three full days of work on this piece, but I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Having a look back at what I started with, this was just a very simple painted dresser, but because I work on mid-century so often, I was able to recognize the maker and I knew what could possibly be underneath all of this paint. It was so much work. There were a few times I considered painting part of it, but the problem was this paint was adhered so poorly that I would have had to take the paint off anyway. As I mentioned in the beginning, there is a matching tall boy with this. I am not in a big rush to go get that because this was so much work. Absolutely worth it. I can't wait to show you what this looks like. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this sort of video, make sure to like and share it. 
consider subscribing if you haven't, and I will see you in the next video.